Good morning, YouTubers. This is Gus Stasio from Healing X Outreach. It's July 5th, the day after the 4th. And uh, just going to go ahead and read a scripture here and talk a little bit about what I call propaganda piles. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. So go ahead and let's take a ride. You know, um, this is a series I'm going to start. It's going to be called Propaganda Piles. And uh, that's because when we come out of the cults, we have a whole lot of cultic propaganda that we are stuck with and buy into. And some of us gain more propaganda when we leave the cults. What's interesting is that you ever, you ever had someone stepped into a pile of dog crap and don't even realize it? They might be walking in dog crap all day, stuck to their shoe. And uh, they even probably smell a little bit of it. They probably, they like, but they don't realize it's on their shoe. And then you come and you tap on them, you're like, hey, I think you stepped into a pile of dog crap. Now, they smelled it. They knew that there was a peculiar smell around them all day long, maybe. But they lived with that all day long. Smelling like dog crap. Didn't even investigate. Didn't even care to see if they had stepped into a pile of dog crap. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, in fact, this Sunday, uh, I was, you know, I worked for Domino's. And uh, it was funny. Uh... I, I, I got to work. I actually left my... Uh, I didn't go to church this Sunday. I, I needed to rest because I had to go straight to work. And I knew I was going to have a long day. And I was exhausted already from working. So I, I worked my overnight job. I get off for of work. I uh, come home. I think I was supposed to take a nap. But I, I, for some reason something happened. I didn't wind up taking a nap. I don't know what it was. And then I went straight to to work at Domino's. I think I, what happened was I was <laughs> I think I was answering one of my comments on YouTube or something. Got involved in the social media conversation. And uh, so I, I, I get to work, and uh, and I did a couple of deliveries. And uh, the manager is, is <laughs> Garrick. Garrick says, "Did nobody tell Gus that he missed one of the, one of his rungs on his belt?" And I didn't even, you know, I, just think about that. I was, I missed one of my rungs. Now, that wouldn't be so obvious or significant if, uh, <laughs> if my draws wasn't showing, you know. <laughs> so I cracked the joke. I said, oh, that's all right. Let's my love handles breathe a little bit more. <laughs> they all started laughing. <laughs> So I, I, I put the rung on, you know. So I, my, my shirt was undone on that little rung uh, that I missed on my on my belt line, <laughs> and um, I don't know what you know. Maybe I might have been my underwear showing. I don't know, but um, you know, I normally tuck in my shirt, so it probably was my shirt was sticking out. Uh, but you know, the fact is that you could be completely unaware that you're out of kilter. That yeah. Yeah, you, you could be completely unaware that you smell like dog crap, and uh, and and that happens a lot for XJWs. You know, XJWs are often completely unaware that they still smell like a Jehovah Witness, <laughs> that they're still unkept, and um, and and you know I, I see it all the time. I see I see it in the comment section under my YouTube videos, and and you know I I have no problem with it. I, I understand where 
some Jehovah's Witnesses and some ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are, are at, and I'm getting actually some some comments from Jehovah's Witnesses. And I think I, I, I try to be as polite as possible, in, um, and in some cases, if it's a really minor thing, I just... I don't even bother. I just let them let let people have their comments. Let them say what they want to say. Let them speak their piece because you know, you know the the fact is we are a work in progress. Ex Jehovah Witnesses, ex cultists, ex Mormons, ex Adventists, but especially especially ex Jehovah's Witnesses, and um, we are a work in progress. And and and, and part of that work in progress is actually. Um, spewing, making a couple mistakes, missing a rung on your belt, you know, so to speak. And and we're going to make some mistakes along the way. Uh, now, the negative, the negative of that is that in social media, and we didn't have social media years ago when, when I first became an ex-witness, the internet was just beginning, and uh, it was uh, it was completely different. It was. Uh, I remember when we had modems, and it was uh, like 9,900 DPS, and if you were really going fast on your modem for the internet, 14,400 DPS. And then I remember when, when you got a modem that was going 21,000 DPS, oh, watch out, <laughs> you know, and, and you used to, and the, the, you used to literally see websites come down in layers, it was like coming down in layers, the graphic, and um, it was so slow, I mean, it would, it, I, I, and the computers were so huge and heavy, heavy computers, but I'm, I'm dating myself, anyway, um, uh, I'm saying that to say this, is that uh, you're going to find a lot of channels, a lot of XJW channels where people are going through the motions, they they are expounding stuff. They're saying things that are really very, very cultic. They're very, very Watchtower reminiscent. And some will, you know, will admit that you know they're just not sure about some stuff. And I know that that's that's been going on a lot. But uh, some won't. Some will expound uh, their their experimentation. And you're the experiment, by the way. Those of you who are watching these videos. Are their experiment, and, uh, and 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 I'm going to explain that in a minute, and and I, I already explained it in another video. Uh, you know, are you being are are you becoming an experiment? Is that some of us who have channels have just come out of the cult, or have very very little experience outside of the cult, or are are recluses, very insular people. And uh, have no experience in regular society, you know, really just being, just being people, just meeting people, just talking to people with different ideas, just dealing with people with different ideologies and different beliefs and handling that. And so um, for, for so many of us, some of us, some of us, the only means of really working through the process of missing the belt loop on our belt holes, you know, of where we're putting our belt through, is on this on these YouTube channels. And yeah, we're we're missing one or two belt holes, and we got half of our butt showing out. <laughs> Some of us got half of our butt showing out, <laughs> and don't even realize it. Don't even realize it, because. We're still indoctrinated and witness thought. Some of us still use the witness rhetoric, you know, Christendom. Uh, religion is a snare and a racket. We're still we're still spewing the old cultic mantra. And and and, and we and, and we have and we also, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a, a good friend on YouTube who has a YouTube channel, great YouTube channel, by the way, does car crashes, <laughs> and. Um, and he said something. He said something about a, a certain scripture, and 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 I understood right away when he used that scripture. He was using it about Christianity. That uh, I understood where he was coming from. I understood that that he was coming from a mentality of 
what he believes Christians believe about that scripture and not what Christians actually believe about that scripture. Because when you come out of the witnesses, the witnesses are so anti-Christian. As I've said, the witnesses are atheism clothed in religion. That's what they are. They are atheism, skepticism clothed in religion. Because out of all the cults, they are the most anti-Christian cult, thanks to good old Judge Rutherford. Partially uh, Charles Taze Russell also, but Judge Rutherford really, really was the propaganda machine that really pushed that lever all the way down. <clears throat> and um, and I understand it, and I still love him. I still I, I still love my friend, and I, I and he said that he's an anti-theist, and I still love him. I understand where he's coming from. I understand also where he's at and that he's a, he's a recent escapee. I understand his mentality and I understand he has to work through those things. You know, I understand that he's got half his butt showing out and he's got a couple <laughs> rungs <laughs> that he's missed on his belt. And, and, and that happens to a lot of us. That happens to a lot of us. I've been there. Believe me, I've been there. I've had the watchtower bias. I've had so many different biases I had to come out of. You know, I was I was so anti-Catholic, and uh, you know, I still I still have some doctrinal issues with Catholicism, but I'm not I'm not now I'm not biased against Catholicism because I took the time to actually learn Catholicism from an insider's perspective, not with a bias, not with the idea that. You know that Catholics have it in against Protestants and this and that. I actually took the time to learn Catholic theology from from an insider's perspective to see what is it that Catholics are seeing when when they, when they look at Christianity. Why why do they see it so different from Protestants or from Evangelicals? And then what I found was, in many ways, in many ways, it was quite beautiful. That Catholic theology is really beautiful. Now, I don't want to become a Catholic, but now I understand those things. And I understand where it is that I should have disagreement with, and I still have disagreement with, and where I should never, ever engage a Catholic on a certain topic. And that leads to another, uh, I just talked about, I think it was on Sunday morning, I did a video. I talked about Saturday, we were supposed to have a debate. And this is a, this is a little story little story uh, I remember being uh, at the mall with my wife I think this was uh, when Amber was just a toddler maybe even younger maybe a baby <clears throat> so this is a long time ago <laughs> a long time ago hold on let me get a sip of water and I heard this lady in the parking lot just really, really raking this other Catholic lady. I mean, raking her through the coals. I mean, really railing into her. <clears throat> and um, and I was like, whoa. And and I could hear her. And I and you know, you guys baptize babies and ba and 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 I understood right away that this Protestant, this Christian, this born again Christian, a sister in the faith was uh, really speaking out of turn and, 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 and talking about the wrong things to divide over this Catholic lady and, and really just being unhinged in, in public about this instead of really trying to reach to this poor woman with, the, with love. She was, uh, she was dividing with anger or with, uh, with actually uh, the kind of rhetoric that we shouldn't you know, use if we're gonna let's have a discussion. Let's not have a heated debate. Let me put it that way. Which is why we do debates, but we don't do heated debates. We do orderly debates on uh, Healing X Outreach. Cheap plug. <laughs> anyway, um, and so uh, so uh, and, and so she's raking her over the coals, and I said, "Hold on, wait a minute, Sheila." That's my wife, Sheila. Love her. Anyway, um, so I, I, I walk over and I said. Excuse me, miss. Shame on you. Shame on you. I said, I'm a believer. I'm a born-again believer. But you're talking about infant baptism to this Catholic. 
and that's not the topic that you, if you're going to divide, you don't divide over infant baptism. I said, let, let, let me break it to you. Methodists baptize babies. They are not Catholics. Presbyterians baptize babies. They're not Catholics. Episcopalians and Anglicans baptize babies. They're not Catholics. And even in some non-denominational churches, at the time, I think I was going to the E-Free Church, baptize babies. And uh, not my, not many evangelical free churches baptize babies, but there's freedom for pastors to do so. And that's probably the one denomination that has the most broader expanse of beliefs uh, that you can have uh, is in the evangelical free church. And so I, I explained this, and I, I said, you know, if you're going to divide with her, you should really know what you're talking about. And, and you should divide on the main and plain things and and you shouldn't be doing this in public like the way you're doing it I said I apologize to you miss for what this lady and her rudeness is doing I said but you're really speaking ignorantly and the, and the Catholic lady thanked me and they actually parted ways and, and I said look and then I pulled her aside I said look you're going to talk, talk about what makes us right with God that's the only thing you should be talking to a Catholic about. Are we saved by faith or by works? Everything else, prayer to the saints, statues, all of that is side issue. It's not going to win her over to Christ. Talk about Jesus. Don't talk about infant baptism. That, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> and, and yeah, you may think that there's something wrong with Protestants doing it, but the, the fact is that uh, there's certain things that you don't know about that you're talking about right here and you're, not, you're, you're speaking with, with ignorance. <clears throat> so, um, and, and my point is, back to the scripture, you know, we can, all things are lawful, but not all things edify. So we, we, we need to be careful what we're listening to, what we're talking about. We, we have freedom to say a lot of things. But, is it going to be beneficial to everyone, what we're saying? We have the freedom to, to, to listen to a lot of things, but is it going to be beneficial to us, what we're listening to? You know, and uh, I think that what happens is, specific, specifically ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are hungry, hungry for information, data, 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 data. You know, they, we want to learn, we want to we wanna know, we want to we wanna teach right now. You know, and uh, and as I said in other videos, when I first came out of the cult, I thought I was ready to teach in churches and everything, and and let them know a thing or two about you know, you know, I was ready to teach them, and I knew absolutely nothing. I knew nothing about Christianity. I I thought I knew, and uh, and what I knew was based upon what. What was fed to me by the cult, which was nothing. It was nothing. And uh, so before I depart, I think we've got, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this to about uh, 30 minutes. I'm going to give one of those nothings, one of those nothings that we're taught and that, that is, goes around the XJW community, that is misinformation. We are the biggest bags of misinformation in the XJW community I've ever seen. We have so much garbage with us that we think we know what we're talking about coming four or five years out of the cult because we know what's wrong with the cult, but we still don't know what's right about Christianity, and we're, we're really basing a lot of assumptions. And this is atheist and theist. I mean, I'm talking about people that... Ha that come out of the cult and still have faith. Some of the some some of us come out of the cult and we're Christians, and we're spewing propaganda piles, dog crap that we don't stepped into, and we're carrying around for us for years and don't even realize we smell like a bunch of crap. So much crap with us. Here goes one of those propaganda piles. Propaganda pile number one. Is hell. I hear this all the time and I see it in memes, and it's not just passed by ex Jehovah's Witnesses, but ex Jehovah's Witnesses love these memes. 
or these gifts. Scene one, Bishop Shelby Sponge being passed around saying the church invented hell. That is the biggest pile of dog crap I have ever, ever seen or heard. And Bishop Shelby, Shelby Sponge is no authority. Defrocked Episcopalian pastor. Got a nothing burger church. In fact, he's got, he's got so few people in his church that he has divided his church with Carlton Pearson, who is a basically a defrocked Pentecostal preacher. And uh, they combined, and they're both universalists, they combined their congregations, the small number group of people in, into one church to, to go ahead and push their big pile of dog crap. Kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park when, when they're going through the park and there's a big giant pile of dinosaur crap and they're looking for the, for the uh, and they hear the, the beacon and, and they find a beacon for the kids that they're looking for as in the big pile of dinosaur crap. This is the biggest load of dinosaur crap is the doctrine of hell and these memes that are being passed around. Christianity did not invent hell. It just didn't. It's the biggest pile of dog crap you'll ever hear. Dinosaur crap. It's, it's not even dog crap size. It's dinosaur crap size. And if you're pushing this stuff, if you, you're actually saying that Christianity invented hell, then you're pushing a whole lot of Jurassic crap. Because the doctrine of hell existed in, the, in Egypt amongst the Egyptians. That's before Christianity. Doctrine of hell existed amongst the Greeks. That's before Christianity. In fact, the doctrine of hell existed amongst the Aztecs and the Incas in, in, in America. <clears throat> so you have in all of these cultures, kind of like the flood account, these varying views about hell, about the underworld, about a place where where the dead are punished. And it's not, it's just long before Christianity even came on the scene. And guess what? The doctrine of hell existed amongst the Jews. And, and I'm going to give you a little assignment. If you think, if you think I'm, I'm pushing out some Jurassic crap, look up Josephus. In Josephus' works, he talks about what the three sects of Jews in the first century believed. He talks about the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Essenes. Now the Essenes, you won't read about in the Bible. They're not in the biblical account, but they existed. They were a recluse, kind of like communal cult of Jews, but very, very pious, very righteous group of Jews, very apocalyptic group group of Jews, which is why they lived out there in the caves. And, and guess guess where we get the come run text from? We get it from where the Essenes lived. They lived in the desert. And more than likely the come run caves findings are from the Essenic Jews of the Old Testament text that we have through come run. Um and so uh, you have the Essenes and you have the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And this is what Josephus writes. And I wrote a little article on it. And it's on Facebook. And if you're on Facebook, I'm going to put the note link right here today. I'm going to put it on here so you can check it up on Facebook if you have a Facebook account of my research on... Actually, it's not even my research. Mark, Mark Weiss, a good brother never was a Jehovah Witness, a good Christian, um, wrote a great article on it, and I have it on my Facebook notes. And yes, if you have Josephus' writings, you can look it up, and you can look it up online on Josephus' writings, it's Book of Wars. <clears throat> and so um, Josephus records that the Essenes believed in hell, and the Pharisees believed in eternal, an eternal hell where the dead and wicked are punished. 
And the Sadducees, of course, rejected the doctrine of hell because the Sadducees rejected the afterlife altogether. It's ironic that, that the Jehovah's Witnesses take more of a semblance with the Sadducees. They, they kind of almost deny afterlife altogether. They believe in afterlife only for the select 144,000, of course. But they deny that there is a hell. They believe that once you're dead, you're dead. And they deny what de death actually means and that there's a difference. And Jesus himself speaks of the difference between biological death and spiritual death. And I'll just quote the scripture. It's in the book of Matthew. I, I can't give you the exact citation, but it'll be in the, com in the, in the citation below. Jesus says, fear not those who can destroy the body, who can kill the body, who can kill the body. Fear him, however, who can destroy both body and soul in the place called hell or Gehenna. Notice the difference. He says, fear, the, fear not those who can kill the body, biological death, but fear him or fear God who can destroy, destroy, not kill, destroy both body and body and soul in a place called hell. The Greek word destroy is apulume. It's not kill. And there's a reason why Jesus doesn't say kill. It says destroy. Because destroy doesn't exactly mean cessation. For example, we use destroy all the time. It doesn't mean that people cease to exist. That football player got destroyed on the field. Yet he walks up. Walks off the field. Or maybe he gets even carted off the field. But he got destroyed. He didn't get killed. That meatloaf rotted away in the fridge is destroyed. Why is it destroyed? Because it's rotted. You can't it can't function for you no more as food. So destroy can mean many things. It doesn't mean necessarily cessation. It can mean loss of usage or to be really pummeled and punished. Jesus doesn't use the word kill. He uses the word destroy. There are many, many other instances where Jesus talks about hell. But my point is, of course, is that hell was not invented by the Catholic Church. Hell was not invented by Christians to put fear-mongering in the churches. Jesus speaks about hell very much. The Pharisees believed in hell. The Essenes believed in hell. And, of course, many, many other cultures speak about hell. So, uh, the point is, then now, what is it about hell was early Christians teaching and there are two views of it and I'll talk about that another time. My point is basically that the propaganda pile, the Jurassic crap that is being passed around about hell is that, of course, that hell was invented by Catholics. Hell was invented by Christians to make people too scared to leave the Christian church. Baloney. There's another reason why people who are in churches have no fear of hell. Because, of course, hell is not a threat to the believer. Doesn't mean that, oh, you know, oh, if you committed a sin, you're going to go to hell. No, that we don't we don't believe that God is so precarious, uh, precarious about condemning people and punishing people. That, of course, is another propaganda pile. And that is inside of you that was taught by the cult this idea that Christians are on this you know people that go to churches think that you know if I sin I'm going to go to hell no there's another propaganda pile that the devil rules hell that's not taught in Christianity it's not taught in the Bible hell is the place that God intended for the devil and his demons so I think that's enough for propaganda piles. It's uh, almost 30 minute mark. That's just number one on my series on propaganda piles. 
that's a big major heavy 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 duty dookie for you guys <laughs> that really gets on my nerves and 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 it's propaganda it's and it really is Jurassic crap and and if you're pushing that then you, you got a whole lot of stink with you because it's, it's not true and uh, and it doesn't even take reading the Bible to figure it out other cultures teach hell that existed pre-existed Christianity and uh, Josephus talks about it and he didn't believe in the New Testament he was a Jew and he talks about it in his book but uh, I'm gonna put the link down on on the Facebook note of Mark Weiss's great article that I have in my notes um, which quotes Josephus and um, as he quotes uh, the S Josephus statement on the Essenes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. And uh, so that's it for me today on Propaganda Pals. And uh, you all have a blessed day. And uh, this Saturday we're going to have a retelecast at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Check us out at blogtalkradio.com backslash healing, the letter X, outreach. Healing X Outreach. Bye-bye.